Hey everybody. Today I'm excited to bring you a different kind of video. I know we've been doing a lot of shorts and reels recently, um, but today we're going to do a little bit longer form video um, in a new category. Um, I just got a new piece of gear, a Roland A49 MIDI controller, um, and we're going to do a little bit of unboxing and review video. Um, I've been in the market for a new controller for a while. I ha I've had a couple different controllers um, before one a full 88 key from a different brand. Um, I won't bash the brand, but I'm probably not going to get their stuff anymore um, and basically learned the lesson you get what you pay for. Um, so looked at some maybe higher quality controllers um, and this one from Roland kept coming back. Um, and I've owned Roland, so I still owned another Roland keyboard um, and it was just a bit bigger then I was looking for looking for something a bit more compact to fit on the desk. So let's open it up. <laughs> so Pickle, Sweetwater have their brochure and um, trademark candy bag on the top. And also typical Sweetwater, they pack it really, really well. Um, they pack it really well and in my opinion also don't go overboard. Um, there's quite a bit of space in this box, but I think uh, it's not outrageous. So here is the box itself. It's a nice small form factor. We'll get this one out of the way. Pretty small keyboard, which is exactly what we were looking for. Um, hopefully this is going to fit right on my desk right behind my QWERTY keyboard. Here it is. It's very light. It's actually a little bit heavier than I expected, reading the specs and the reviews. Um, a lot of people said <laughs> it's so light that it kind of feels like a toy. Um, it doesn't quite get into that territory for me. Um, it's very light, but it also feels sturdy to me, which is good. Here it is, so we can all see. Um, yeah, this looks great. Exactly what I was hoping for. Very, very slim. Um, got all the typical Roland stuff. One thing I love about Roland keyboards is that they typically have this joystick here in place of most keyboards have two separate wheels here, one to control pitch and one to control modulation. Roland covers that in one stick where you can do pitch side to side and it always centers back to zero. Um, and then you can do modulation up and down. Um, the only disadvantage I found with that is that since the modulation always snaps back to zero, um, if you're using it to control volume, um, that can kind of get a little dicey if you're controlling VSTs on your computer um, because you have to keep it held at exactly where you want it. You can't just set it and forget it. Um, but you can compensate for that with something like an expression pedal, um, which we're hopefully intending to do down the road. Um, you've got, so you've got the, the mod and pitch stick there. Um, got a bunch of different buttons, some transport controls, which should allow you to do a lot of work on this without even touching your QWERTY keyboard or mouse which is super, super nice. Really, really looking forward to digging into those. I haven't had a keyboard that that's, that's that deep before. Um, let's... Keys feel really nice. Pretty consistent between the white and the black keys, um, which feels a lot like my other rolling board. Um, so that's about what we can say without plugging it in. So I think we're going to cut and go do that. So 
So now we're here, we're all set up. Um, got the driver, which is the only thing we needed to get from the internet. Um, it was super easy to find. Go to roland.com slash support. And then they've got all their instruments listed there. So it's easy to find conveniently. Um, the A49 is near the top of the list. Um, they might have just used one driver for all the A series keyboards. They've also got an A88, which is a full size um, 88 key, uh, fully weighted um, hammer action keyboard version of this guy. Um, but so click on the A series driver, get that um, pretty straightforward to install. Um, and now we're here. Um, so I brought up GarageBand with um, a basic uh, Spitfire BBCSO template, um, just so we can actually hear some sounds from this thing. So with that, um, important to note, um, this is a MIDI controller, which um, generally speaking, that category of keyboards doesn't actually come with its own onboard sounds or speakers. Um, they're specifically designed to interface with your computer um, so that you can control um, other virtual instruments that you already have, um, which means that it doesn't come with a bunch of stuff that you may or may not ever use. You, you know exactly what you're gonna use because you already have that separately on your computer. So that's part of what makes it so light. Um, is that they don't have you know, banks of all these different kinds of sounds um, and you're not getting anything that you're not going to use. You're just getting a really nice um, controller. So that said, you do need, um, this is one just one piece of, of a system of gear that you would need to use it um, properly. So I've got it hooked up to the computer now. Um, what was really nice to discover was that um, all the ports, there's a, a USB port and it's bus powered, so you don't need a separate power cable, which is super, super nice. Um, that's just one less piece of black spaghetti going all over the place. Um, the, the ports are all recessed, um, which gives them a bit of space to actually curve around because um, I've got it pretty close up here to the back wall of the desk. Um, so the ports are all recessed, as you can kind of see in here. So it's got the USB port. Um, there's a, a standard MIDI port, and then there are two um, ports for pedals, um, which I'll be hooking up later. I won't need them at this exact moment right now, but it's got place for a sustain pedal and for a um, an expression pedal, um, and that's going to come in super handy later. Um, so we're just getting a nice close-up of the board right now. So over here on the left is the, um, the DAW control section. Um, I haven't dug into that a ton yet um, but a lot of it looks really straightforward um, and then just the key bed with some some other functionality as well um, so yeah let's let's get into it and see how it plays so i've got the bbc so violins one pulled up right now um, and again i love the roland um, stick here so i'm going to be using this to control um, the expression or the dynamics of the violins so there we go um there's just a very quick run through um I'm not sure if that was the right key for Holst or not, but that's what came to me just then. Um, so again, uh, you can zip around the board and change octaves really easily. So if you want to play the same thing in like the meat and potato range of the cellos, um, set the octave back where it was. Um, and so you've got each of the, the instrumental registers um, right where they should be, and it's very easy to navigate around the board. You've got uh, like five or six different octaves of freedom. Um, so if you need to go play piccolo, um, um, you bump up the octaves right there, and then you need to play in the same register on the flute. Take it down one. 
Um, come down for your oboes and clarinets. Um, etc. So it's super, super easy to navigate around. The keys feel really nice. I'll go to um, the harp. Um, that might give a nice feel for how consistent they are. Um, pretty, pretty consistent uh, between black keys and white keys, which is really, really nice. So here's all white keys. Um, I guess my, my piano technique could could use some improvement, getting that to be really consistently voiced, but go to some black keys. Sounds about the same. Some more black keys. All black keys. Like the, the consistency of, of the dynamics um, throughout the chord voicing sounds about the same. So the keys have a really, really nice response on the white or blacks, um, which is super, super nice in a keyboard. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really really looking forward to using this. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, engraving and editing lately um, while we've been in the search for a new a new board. So I haven't been using the board a lot, but um, there's going to be the start of a bunch of new projects coming up soon. So I'm really really looking forward to digging in with this um, and seeing where it goes. Thanks for watching.